So to remind you, we are tracing the development of an idea from Bill Hamilton through Bob Trivers and David Haig now to Bernie Crespi and Chris Badcock. So at intervals of about a decade, each one of them is taking up this idea and finding that it has new implications and extending it to a new range of phenomena. In this case, mental health. So the question in, in this segment is, do genetically mediated parental conflicts of interest actually shape the behavior and the mental health of children? The idea for this was triggered when it was seen that some genes that are expressed in the brain also have parent of origin imprinting and they vary in copy number. The hypothesis that, uh, that Bernie and Chris came up with is really uh, rather novel and kind of strange. Basically they say that normally there is a balance of parental interest between maternal and paternal imprints and that leads in a well-balanced mind. However, it can be tipped out of balance either by paternal bias or maternal bias. And if it's paternal bias that tips it out of balance, you get into autistic spectrum disorders. And if you get maternal bias, you get into psychotic spectrum disorders. So with paternal bias, you expect more demanding offspring that have higher birth weight and autistic behavior. And with maternal bias, you expect less demanding offspring, lower birth weight, and psychotic type behavior. These are not the only explanations of uh, psychosis and autism. They are layered on top and intermingled with other things which are going on. There are not imprinted genes and there are environmental effects as well. So what really matters here is the balance of maternally and paternally derived gene product. And that balance can be shifted by either by disrupting imprinting or by copy number variation. It was actually David Haig that first noticed this interesting contrast in syndromes. It's the contrast between Angelman and prader willi syndrome. In Angelman syndrome, the interests of paternal genes are overexpressed, and in prader willi syndrome, it's the interests of maternal genes that are overexpressed. Angelman babies are difficult babies. They have prolonged suckling, they cry frequently, they are hyperactive, they hardly sleep at all. They want to breastfeed every 15 minutes, all night long, and they have very high rates of autism. Prader Willi babies have poor suckling, they have weak crying, they are inactive or sleepy, and they have 30 to 70 percent of psychosis in adults. They are so undemanding that their parents are quite worried about how fast they're growing before they're two years old. Angelman syndrome is caused by deletion or inactivation in the maternally inherited copy of chromosome 15. So basically, this is a perturbation that turns off the maternal resistance to the paternal interest. prader willi is caused by deletion or inactivation of the same genes, except it's the paternal copy. So here the paternal copy is being turned off and maternal interests are expressed. And you can see that contrast in behavior. Now, what's autism? Well, it was something that Kanner and Asperger really analyzed and discovered. And it is a defect in social reciprocity, in language, and really autistic children have very restricted interests. They have stereotypical behavior. And in extreme cases, they cannot talk. They are children who don't have the normal emotional intelligence that most of us have. The overall incidence of autism is about 0.5 to 1 percent, but it's a spectrum of effects. Psychosis is something that was primarily noticed and defined by Krapelin and Bloiler, illustrated here with Sylvia Plath. And it consists of schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depressions and they share phenotypes. So among these three, they share hypermentalistic cognition and hallucinations and delusions. And then if you work through these Venn diagrams, you can see some of the ways that psychiatrists try to discriminate the three conditions. Like autism, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder are at pretty low frequency, but depression is fairly common 
And this range of psychotic effects is a spectrum. Some people uh, just have very minor symptoms, but some people are really debilitated by it. This led to the uh, basically Crespi-Badcock hypothesis that autism and schizophrenia form a single spectrum where traits like language, sense of self, mentalistic skill, social emotionality, social intelligence, logical analytical skill, and goal pursuit are underdeveloped in autism and overdeveloped in schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and depression. So very extreme autistic people can't speak. They have a reduced sense of self. They have no goal pursuit. They have mechanical logic. People who have overdeveloped these traits have auditory hallucinations, megalomania, depression, thought disorders, and so forth. So the, the hypothesis can be tested in at least three ways. One is to look at mutations that produce genetic diseases, like Angelman and prader willi Another is with copy number variants. And then a third is with phenotypic correlates of disruption, so looking at phenotypic correlates of birth weight. Let's take an example of copy number variation. This is the contrast uh, between Williams syndrome and another syndrome. Okay, so Williams syndrome is a deletion. Uh, this, this represents the two chromosomes, one from mom and dad, and it shows that this gene has been deleted on one copy. And over here we have a duplication of the same region. Here there is spared or enhanced verbal skills, visual spatial deficits, hypersocial, fascinated with faces, highly empathetic, lots of anxiety. This is on the psychotic spectrum. The duplication leads to severe language delay, very high rates of autism, and seizures. So here is a reciprocal copy number variation situation that is eliciting on the one hand with a deletion, schizophrenia, on the other hand, autism with a duplication. Another case is Smith-McGinnis syndrome contrasted with Potecki-Lupski syndrome. There is a deletion in Smith-McGinnis, and there's a duplication in Potocki-Lupski. These have strong verbal strength, highly social, and there are reports of bipolar and mood disorders. In Potocki-Lupski, there's high rates of autism and seizures. So this is a case, again, where it looks like the same genes, if deleted, give one condition, and if duplicated, give the other. So work through a large number of cases like that. And for one chromosomal region on the first human chromosome that has a series of a number of genes that could all be affecting this sort of thing, uh, there were two cases of autism with deletions and a total of 10 cases of autism with duplications. With deletions, there were 15 reports papers reporting schizophrenia and four papers recording schizophrenia with a duplication. So the probability that you would get this kind of setup where you've got duplications producing much more autism and, and deletions producing much more schizophrenia is one in a thousand. Okay? So these are case control studies where these are the number of cases in each of the papers that are being cited here. If you work through seven such examinations of chromosomal regions, four re resulted in copy number variants, reciprocal copy number variants, and they did seem to mediate the risk of autism and schizophrenia, and three didn't. So there were two cases where the deletions seemed to produce autism and the duplications produced schizophrenia. And there were two cases where the deletions, in contrast, produced schizophrenia and the duplications produced autism. However, there were three other chromosome regions where there was no evidence of, of association. Okay, so you were getting autism and schizophrenia out of this, but it wasn't in this contrasting fashion. All four of those boxes in that table would be equally filled. Well, let's take those ideas and 
take a look at things like Angelman versus prader willi syndrome and Silver-Russell syndrome uh, versus another syndrome and look at their incidence in 1.6 million births in Denmark. Okay, this is everybody that was born in Denmark between 1977 and 2009. This is the distribution of gestation lengths in days. This is the distribution of birth weights. The red line is the mean weight for a given gestation length. The blue and green dots are the paternally biased syndromes, and the yellow and orange dots are the maternally biased syndromes. And infants with syndromes with paternal bias were significantly heavier at birth than infants with syndromes of maternal bias. That is a way of trying to decide whether or not birth weight can actually be used as a marker of the degree of paternal or maternal bias. And it seems to work out reasonably well. It's not perfect, but, and other things are going on, but it's an indicator. Now let's ask, what is the risk of autism and psychosis relative to birth weight? So mean birth weight is about three and a half kilos. This is in grams down here. And what you see in blue is the risk of autism, and what you see in red is the risk of schizophrenia or psychosis. And these are just for normal births in Denmark occurring. This is all Danes over this 30 year period. And what you can see is that the relative risk of autism and schizophrenia, at least on the heavier birth weights, changes exactly the way that Crespi and Badcock would predict. On the low side, it changes in the way they would predict until you get into very small preemies. And there, there appears to be a complete mix of different kinds of pathologies that occur in the brains of very small infants and the risk of both kinds of disorders goes up significantly. When you get down to a baby who is only about, say, three pounds or something like that, then it is at considerably increased risk of both kinds of mental disease. So there does seem to be a spectrum of reciprocal risk, and it's not completely consistent, but it's strongly suggestive that Crespi and Badcock are onto something. So to summarize, the connection between genomic conflict and mental health is made through genes that influence behavior that is usually normal. Mental disease is not thought to be selected, but rather to be the pathological byproduct of the disruption of an equilibrium of genetic interests. The kinship genomic theory of the autism psychosis spectrum is supported by a growing body of several types of evidence, but it's very new and it is in need of additional tests. Think for a moment about what it would mean if it turned out to be correct. Part of that would be that Bill Hamilton had an idea 40 years ago about kin selection that led to the notion of evolutionary conflicts of interest that here got connected in disruptions of interest to mental disease. That's a completely unexpected connection.